Good afternoon. Welcome everyone who has joined us. I'm Olha Tamanova, Media Center in Ukraine Forum. The ninth year of the war, 152nd day from the beginning of the full-fledged invasion. I'm grateful to everyone who is covering this war by telling the truth. Today we're going to be discussing the safe transportation of grain through ports of Ukraine. Our first speaker is Alexander Kubrakov, Minister of Infrastructure. Alexander, good afternoon, colleagues, friends. Now, briefly about what's going on, what's being signed, which type of agreement, how it's going to be working, with the key word of safety. That's what we're going to start with. I have heard certain apprehension and ideas in the society that it looks like we have signed the agreement and the war stops. No, the war has, is, goes on, nothing has stopped. We have railway, we have highways, every day they are being attacked by the military of the Russian Federation. Over the weekends, uh, uh, the power uh, supply station of the railway has been uh, shelled as well as the port. So we're talking about the navigation in Black Sea, safe navigation there. For us, principally important, it was that in our ter territorial waters and in our ports, everything will be controlled by the armed forces of Ukraine. No representatives of UN or other countries, there will never be any of them there and let me remind you that our armed forces our navy have returned the control over the snake islands the uh, flag is on there then the bistre uh, bot uh, bottleneck uh, was opened and a couple of dozen um, ships went through this throat so it all started with the liberation of the Snake Islands. Separately, I would like to stress out that the demining uh, would be happening within the corridor that is needed to export grain. But let me reiterate. Even when World War II was over, we were still uh, detecting mines from that time in Black Sea a couple of hours back. So, uh, of course, we'll be cautious and careful. All of the uh, ships will be convoyed by the Ministry of Infrastructure boats leading the way. And it's not going to be an easy process. Why it's important, economically speaking? Well, under such dire economic circumstances, it's important that Ukraine gets uh, inflow of hard currency uh, by uh, deblocking the uh, ports, and it's one billion dollars into the national budget a month, according to the Ministry of Finance and the National Bank. And our grains have received the funding this year and have already planted for the next uh, season. We don't want to lose such an important industry as agriculture, so it's the matter of survival for the whole industry. Now, as to our International partners, everybody recognizes that this is an, a necessity exclusively. Why? Looking at the global inflation rate present in all of the developed countries, we can observe what's happening in Africa, on other continents, without our grain. And even though uh, they claim that Ukraine's grain is just 1%, no, it's not 1%. We have food as well, uh, not only uh, gr crops, but also... Other traditional markets of Ukrainian grain are already experiencing hunger. So all our partners recognize that and try to help us out in this. 
So how did it happen? It was initiated by the UN when the G General Secretary visited Kyiv. President Zelensky has supported his role as a uh, very important, but the role of the UN as a go-between is important, as well as Turkey that plays an important role, and separately our partners US, UK, and the EU. Of course, our team, Andriy Yermak, was constantly on line with uh, with Secretary General, uh, Chief of uh, Military Intelligence Budanov, and uh, Mr. Maskov, my deputy, who was instrumental in making it happen. So that's briefly what happened. Yuri will tell you more what mechanism we'll be using looking forward and what we expect from the industry. Thank you. Alexander, a couple of clarifications first, if it's okay with you. What steps? should be made by us and by everyone involved into this agreement and when it might uh, be carried out. Well, hopefully it will be uh, started being implemented in the uh, coming days when the special coordination center would be opened in Turkey, in Istanbul. So sometime this week we hope uh, this whole process would start, and when it does, we'll invite media, of course, uh, in the coming days. Here's Mikola Solsky, the Minister of Agrarian Policy and uh, Food Stuff. Thank you, and good afternoon, esteemed journalists and citizens of Ukraine. I would focus... on what the opening of those corridors would impact. This huge work carried out by the military and the Ministry of Transportation is directly impacting lots of processes opening both globally and first and foremost in Ukraine. What I mean by this? When we talk about the agrarian industry, like last week, we heard certain figures. The president mentioned that after the agreements were signed, we have the inventory of grain, total amount $10 billion. That's true, a huge amount indeed. But in addition, what we expect this year and what we need to export this, that's additionally $20 billion. money paid when we sell this grain, allowing the gradients to keep functioning. And I'm talking about the whole rural area of Ukraine, uh, landowners who rent their lands, uh, farmers who need uh, incoming funds to plant the next year's harvest. So when people talk about the threat of hunger, the one and only reason that would cause hunger in a lot of places and might cause shortage of some products in Ukraine would be that our farmers in the future, and the future starts now because uh, in August, they need to start a new sowing campaign for next year, so they would have no funds, no arguments to do it for next year. So this agreement uh, is aimed at resolve the problems of the farmers, which means the volume of grain exported from Ukraine will keep being increased. The logistics costs would be decreasing, and the Ministry of uh, Transportation and Alexander Kubrakov mentioned a couple of things that were done before at Danube River, for instance, to increase the number of river boats and barges to move more grain, more cereals. Because now the price is $350, 
and we pay 200 plus for all the go-betweens, those who do the shipment, the uh, offloading, onloading. Well, historically, the farmer gives 15 percent to infrastructure, to railway, to ports, only 15 percent. So if we are not ensuring that, then there will be even bigger problem in Ukraine and even bigger problem in the world. I said it by saying, first of all, in Ukraine, and we all need to recognize and acknowledge this when we discuss this topic. Objectively speaking, while remembering about everything else, but we should ensure that Ukraine will, ha will need to have the trustworthy reputation. We also request and ask for something, and we need to let people commit to to working with us. Well, can you tell us more how step by step the process of tr uh, exportation of grain would happen? What, uh, how periodic that those convoys would be? Who would be accompanying them? Okay, th thank you. In addition to what the ministers said, more technical information. So two parallel processes. The first one. Establishing joint coordination center in Istanbul. Our staff has arrived there already today. Other counterparts would arrive there as well. And hopefully, sometime Monday or Tuesday, all the internal technical documents regulating the work of the center would be endorsed and come Wednesday it would be operational. The work of this coordination center is to ensure oversight and coordination of the function of so-called humanitarian corridor. It doesn't cover the territorial waters of Ukraine. Uh, only the Ukrainian authorities have full competence to administer the Ukrainian territorial waters. The second process is getting our services and ports ready, port authorities. Something that is happening for the couple of days now, port terminals, port administrations, relevant services, uh, hopefully within 24 hours would be ready to relaunch the exportation of agricultural products from the port of Chernomorsk, it will be the first one, then the port of Odessa, and then Pivdenny, which is southern port. So within a couple of uh, weeks, we'll be technically ready to carry out export from all of the terminals of those above three ports. The administration of the seaports of Ukraine let the market players know what would be the procedure to start this process, first by supplying the applications. Today, along with our military, we will uh, approve a more detailed information uh, document with the coordination of sites to where the ships need to arrive to be part of the convoy. And again, territorial waters of Ukraine would be administered and managed only by the authorities of Ukraine. And within this week, hopefully the first shipment will be sent out. That's it from me. Steamed speakers, can you please get here for the Q&A session? Mr. McCall, the question to you. I am an agrarian, right? So can you tell me, please, what should I do to sell my grain under the current conditions and what would be the pricing? As a farmer, you need to collect your grain first. That's what we are doing now. 
the harvesting of the yield started, so nothing extraordinary needs to, needs to be done compared to previous years. No applications, no, no. What the Minister of Transportation and his deputy were talking about uh, are about the companies that traditionally operate as uh, transshipment companies uh, in the port. So that's what they would keep doing. They will come to the farmers themselves. So in, and in the last couple of days, we can see that the farmers start getting offers to buy out grain, and there will be a couple of offers coming, coming, and thus the price is becoming higher. Leveling out the exchange rates is one of the reasons, and the second reason was the opening of the ports. Thus, the price went up, and it's 20 or 30 percent increase for corn. Even wheat, even though uh, the yield was huge and the price is not yet as high as the farmers would like it to be, and missed the minister, but it's still increased by 10% already for wheat. So, colleagues, questions? Pavlo Kovalchuk, ONN. The question to both Alexander and Mekola. The opening of the ports would help to transport not only the grain, but also the ammonia from Ukraine. Is it true? And what sort of ammonia? Who would be buying? What's the amount? And whether it's the ammonia that was transported previously by Taliati Azot pipeline? Well, the agreement covers everything that uh, uh, is needed for the agrarian products, including fertilizers. Uh, well, ammonia being one of the fertilizers that might be going out or coming into Ukraine and transshipped through our ports. I can't tell you for sure right now uh, more to be shared when this coordination center would be agreeing the particular shipments and commodities for particular ships. So we hope that it will be a two-way highway, exportation but importation as well. Oksana Polichuk, Ukraine Forum. According to the agreement, the sides would not be attacking ships and port facilities. The Russia violated this. What are our actions? And who would represent Ukraine in this joint coordination center? Second question. Firstly, we have signed the agreement with the UN and Turkey. And so we will stick to our agreements allowing navigation through Black Sea, something that is needed to us and to the whole civilized world. We all clearly recognize that if something happens in the Black Sea, then this whole initiative would be put on hold. Thank you. Colleagues, what's the status of our agrarian products located at the occupied territories? Will our agrarians will have the opportunity to uh, ship it out using this, grasping this agreement? not while it's behind the front line. A simple answer to a simple question, even though we all would like it to be different. So this whole territory will have to be uh, liberated first, and then the agrarians will have to face much more problems than the farmers are facing here in the uh, mainland. Max Gunter Reuters, question to Mr. Kubrakov, but if you want to add anything, go for it. So, what are currently the biggest risks and what factors could uh, affect negatively this process? There's just one factor, that the war still goes on with the Russian Federation. We have all observed quite vividly on Saturday that the port infrastructure will be shelled by them. This is the biggest threat, and this will scare the market off this, those shellings. Uh, and secondly, the physical infrastructure, the port infrastructure and the sh ships might be uh, damaged. So the sa safety is the biggest factor. Uh, Deutsche Welle, I have a clarification on the shellings. So, 
if it happens again, what would be the reaction of Ukraine? And as a follow-up to your previous answer, you said, Uh, ec exportation only of agrarian products from the Ukrainian ports, no other commodities? Uh, well, what if it's cars, for instance? They will not let those uh, ships go through the corridor? What? As to the commodities, currently the initiative is focused only on the products of the agrarian sector. And your first question was? if the shellings continue. Well, our position is uh, straightforward. We have signed the agreement with the UN and Turkey, and these are the uh, parties that should guarantee safety. If they can guarantee it, it works. If it don't, it, uh, it doesn't. The question from the BBC, will you first check the safety of the corridors? And if yes, who would do this testing? Our technical fleet of our state-run companies will be faring along this corridor first. So we'll be leading the way and the commercial ships will be following us. So you asked who will be our members in the coordination center, both civilians and military. More questions, please. Uh, we know that United Nations and also Turkey are in collaboration uh, in order to, to have this grain deal. Uh, so after uh, and based of the statement of uh, Mr. Akar, how reliable do you believe that Turkey is uh, in this period, in this grain uh, deal? Uh, if I understood your question correctly, and if some of the colleagues will correct me if I'm wrong, to what extent Turkey will stay in the upcoming processes, right? Yeah, I, I know how to handle it. Let me give it a try. Turkey is one of the parties of this initiative. But the initiative comes from the UN, so for us the pivotal role is played by the United Nations, first and foremost. Yuria Pashkova Espresso, you said that according to this agreement, uh, we can export grain one billion a month, but uh, uh, we were told that the total amount is for 10 billion. So does it mean that we'll have to sign a next agreement for next year or what? Look. When I said one billion, that was the figure from the Ministry of Economy on Friday. I said, oh, from Alexander, right, today? Well, these are correct initial figures that we need to reach. Ten billion, and it doesn't contradict one another. One another. Ten billion is what we need to e export from the previous period. One billion is total amount, that's 3 million of tons through those tons. So that's the throughput of those ports, 3 million tons. So you multiply it by pessimistic prices, because you can use optimistic. So it, that's $1 billion. Of course, uh, there will be the reduction uh, in logistics costs uh, in the future, but the initial figure is that we will be able to export for the total amount of one billion. No, it does. It's not stated in the agreement. The wording of the agreement is publicly available. There is no reference to one billion, ten billion, three million. No, it's free market, and uh, that was our key condition. Is that's the agreement for 120 days, one billion a day, a, a month. So it's not 10, but four. But you explain it. Previously, we learned through mass media that Russia could also sell their grain through Turkish ports and sell uh, their own Russian grain. So, uh, but uh, would would they allow Russians to sell the Ukrainian grain through? Russia uh, through Turkish ports. The foreign ministry keeps uh, it under their uh, scrutiny, so ask the foreign ministry. Question to, the Ale to Alexander on the inspectors. 
according to the agreements among the inspectors, there will be Russians, right? Right. So, clarification. The grain that will be exported will be from the state reserves or all of the grain that we have? All of the grain. That's market to you. Uh, at the best of times, we didn't have that much uh, grain left in our uh, state reserve. So 99% that would be grain of our farmers. Private structures. The role of the uh, government will be will depend on the fluctuation on the market. If our farmers expect to wait for higher prices, well, wait for our uh, notifications. Have you talked to the insurers? And what's the probability that the insurers would be ready to insure the ships? And if they disagree, Will the government create an insurance fund similar to what before the war was established for air uh, transportation? We conducted negotiations with the Secretary General of the UN, with the Secretary General of the International Maritime Organization, asking to reconsider the criteria of safety and military risks that currently exist in the uh, south northern western part of the Black Sea. And they promised to do that because that would impact directly the uh, insurance policy rate. We had similar situation in March when the Danube ports were in operation and we've seen some ships ready to enter. They demanded guarantees from the government. government. The government will hand out those guarantees but they won't work and now we have about 100 uh, foreign ships that are daily ready to pass there. So what I'm driving at, as soon as we are, th as soon as we go through with the first successful trips of our ships, the market will react to this and the insurance tariffs will go down. That's what we expect. And working in parallel with the International Maritime Organization and the insurance committee to support those uh, uh, ships that will be entering Ukrainian ports. This is a market. The government is not involved in this. Well, currently we have ship owners who are ready to enter the Ukrainian ports in the uh, nearest couple of weeks and then uh, leave the ports. What conditions they have with the insurers? We have no clue. Any questions? Question to Mr. Sumskoy. Tell us, please, how the pricing situation will change at the global and domestic markets as the result of those supplies. The opening of the ports is one of the factors that currently impacts the grain prices. There are a couple of factors, and all of them are very important. The Ukrainian factors is one of them, one of the most important ones. So the first thing that we observed is that the stock exchange uh, brought the price on corn and wheat three or four dollars down on Friday. So what factors impact the increase in the price? The draft in uh, Europe and neighbors like Romania, Hungary, etc. The factors that impact on and another factor is the countries that traditionally bought grain reserves 
for a long time. This year we'll try to make grain reserves for even longer period of time because psychologically they are ready for this and uh, official decisions will come soon. The factors that will cause the price to go down is expectation of huge harvests in Brazil, the expectation of uh, US to reduce the bioethanol content in fuel and thus using less uh, fodder for that. So uh, we expect that the price, my personal opinion, the price has the risk of going down globally. But in Ukraine, this will be two opposite movements. The price for the farmers will keep increasing because of the logistics cost going down, while in the ports it will go down. But these are global markets and nobody can uh, affect them in any way. No further questions. I would like to thank you. This was Mikola Solsky, the Minister of Agrarian Policy and Foodstuff, Alexander Kubrakov, the Minister of Infrastructure 